Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I'll come back into some more bite-sized business advice. And we got a conversation today that hopefully shakes your mind up a little bit about how you think about growing your business, making money, and helping your clients. Of course, we're going to talk about three reasons why most entrepreneurs don't make six and seven figures in your business. And Hopefully, we'll give you a path to fix it. I don't know. At worst case, we're just going to talk about why you don't make that much money. But <laughs> uh, I have an amazing guest with me lined up here, and I'm excited to dive in. So, Nikki Bilu, welcome to the show, and thank you for being here. Brandon, thanks for having me on the show. It's an honor to be here, man. Excited. I'm excited to have you here. We're talking about the three reasons why uh, entrepreneurs don't make six and seven figures. Let's back up before that, though. Tell me a little bit about what you do and how you've come to realize that most don't cross that barrier. So that's a great question. Um, and I think the best way to start off is for me to tell you my backstory. So I'm originally an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. When I was 11 years old, the Islamic Revolution took place in Iran, and it just upended my world. And Mom and dad, they could see the writing on the wall that Iran was no longer going to be a great place to raise a Christian family. So they sat down and they made a plan. And eventually they got my brothers and I out of Iran and we settled where I now live in Toronto, Canada. Now at 11, I didn't want to leave my home. I didn't want to leave my friends. Right. But in retrospect, it was the single greatest thing mom and dad could have done for me and my two brothers. They took us from a legacy of tyranny to a legacy of freedom. And I believe inside every human breast beats the living heart of freedom. Every man, every woman on this planet wants to march to the tune of their own drummer. Think about it. If you're an entrepreneur, freedom is the bedrock of your existence. Without freedom, you can't have free enterprise. Without free enterprise, you can't have entrepreneurship. You, you depend on the favor of the people in power just to be able to do business, right? So... I'm a strong believer in that. And my late father was a strong believer in that. He was an entrepreneur. He was also a man who really believed in people. He'd always tell me every day, son, that man in front of you, that's someone's son, that's someone's brother, that's someone's father, that's someone's husband. That's a hero to somebody. And maybe someone just like you ripped them off or did them wrong, okay? It's your job to restore their faith in humanity. Because remember, son, life is about people. It's not about business. It's not about money. He said even business is not about money. I said, Dad, what are you talking about? Of course business is about money. I said, without money, you can't do business. I'm eight years old. I'm a smart aleck, right? But Dad goes, that's true, son. But without people, there's no need for money. There's no need for business. And you just have to remember that every human being on the planet needs somebody to believe in them, somebody to see their greatness, somebody to help them get past whatever is in their way. And that's a fact, right? And so, you know, for me, I took this on from my father. He passed away four years ago. And what I did, I became a man who held aloft that torch that he passed on to me of believing in my fellow man. If you ask me, Nikki, hey, what do you do for a living? And we talked about this off camera, right? I said, look, I help coaches. I help consultants. I help people who want to become coaches and consultants, maybe you're in other fields. And, you know, I got all kinds of skills and tools to teach them these things. But here's the truth, brother. The thing that I'm most proud of is that I'm a professional believer in people. It's a, it's a beautiful way to be too. And I think I, I see that people get confused by that a lot of times because we ignore the human aspect of business. And I'm not saying everybody, and please don't, if you're listening, please don't hear me say that. Um, but a lot of people and a lot of the loudest messages in the marketplace are about being selfish, about only doing what's right for you. And we forget, like your father said, that that business is about the humans that are connected to it. It's about building other people up. It's about helping your clients. Uh, serving and, and providing a solution to the marketplace. It, I, I think I think it's just hard because that's not the general message that's out there. So how do you, do you see that first of all? 
um, in the marketplace? And how do you combat that? You know, brother, um, great question. There are a lot of what I call charlatan marketers out there. These are people with great sales and marketing skills, but maybe not the greatest ethics. These are people who want to get their hand in your wallet. They don't really care whether they deliver or not. It's a happy accident if they do, right? And I had a client a few years back and her name was, um, I'm, I, I'm going to call her Julie, okay? That's not a real name. But Julie had spent $125,000 on these charlatan marketers to help get her business going with zero return, zero, not one penny. Her husband came to her and said, honey, I love you, but you're spending us in the poorhouse. Give me your credit cards. And she was disappointed, right? Because she really believed she had something that could be of value and of service to people. And so when she started to do that, um, what happened straightforward and straight up was that um, she lost faith. And then someone introduced her to us and we sat down with her and we knew what wasn't working for her. All the things they were telling her to do, put money in the pockets of the people who were telling her to do it, but they weren't really making a difference for her. And I thought to myself, look, you got to just try some organic methods. You got a big network, talk to people. So we got her on a strategy of getting her message really powerfully dialed in, right? And narrowing her focus to go after one particular group of people. And after she did that, boom. Within two months, her income went from under two grand a month to 20 grand a month. This is two months. And year over year, January of the year before she started with us, she did just over $530, like $532. January the first year she was with us, she did $52,000 and change. That's a 10,000% increase. Now, she is a genuine person. She wants to help people. She didn't do any of this pushy sales tactics, this you know, manipulating people's emotions crap. What she did was she found out what people's pain was. She got clear whether she was the person who could help them. And if she was, she started to offer to help them. And before you knew it, business started rolling into her. Now, why did that happen? Because somebody cared about her and believed in her. And that was us because she'd stopped believing in herself. Somebody was not just trying to get their hand in her wallet. And in her case, she really understood that God had put her here for a purpose, a mighty purpose to make a big dent in the universe. And the truth of the matter is that, um, it would have been a travesty if she hadn't gone to get that dent made in the universe, pure and simple. And she knew that and she didn't quit on herself. And that's what made success be possible. That's amazing. I love those stories. Those are the people that, that we want to, we want to serve with this show because you said something uh, both on the episode and then prior to recording that uh, these people who the charlatans, um, they're really good at sales and marketing and they have no ethics. And you said the complete opposite uh, is your ideal client, the people who have ethics and maybe are lacking in the sales and marketing to some degree. Those are the yeah. people we want to talk to because those are the people that need to win um, and they align with our Christian values. Um, and I yeah. see that over and over and over as they just need that little bit of help. So Let's dive in. Let's talk about the three reasons that people are not crossing the six and seven make figure mark and, and help them get to that other side so that the good people, the good guys with the right message and ethics can actually win in this game. So you tell me where you want to start with these three reasons. So look, number one is you've got to understand that if you're not, if you're not embracing that you need to sell and you're not having conversations to have people do business with you. You don't have a business. You have a hobby. Okay. You don't have a business. You have a hobby. And there's, there's nothing wrong with having a hobby, but it's not a business. A business means that you provide a service to solve an acute problem for people who badly want to solve that problem. And you're willing to have conversations with those buyers. Now I'm not talking about, you know, 
selling a $20 sandwich or something like that, right? You don't, you don't need to have conversations with anybody to sell a $20 sandwich. I'm talking if you're a coach, if you're a consultant, if you're an other service provider and you sell a relatively high ticket item. So we're talking, you know, uh, $2,000 and up, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $100,000, half a million dollars and up. Now, if you believe that um, you've got such a service that can be sold for that kind of price point and you want to sell it, you got to embrace that you have to sell it. You, I'm pointing at myself. I have to sell what I'm selling, right? Not social media posts, right? Not showing up on podcasts as much as this is awesome. And podcasts have been a big part of my strategy to bring in leads, but I'm going to need to have a conversation with a fellow human being, with a man or a woman who's in pain, whose business is stagnant in order to get them to buy. And you need to do the same. Okay. So I'll tell you the story of um, an individual that we just worked with very, very recently. Um, this fellow was a tax accountant. He's not even a coach, right? But he offers a service. And he never did more than about 10, 12K a month in sales. He really wanted to step it up. And we have a program, a sales accountability program. It's called 90K in 90 Days. We help people add an extra 90K to their business over a 90-day period. And this guy really thought that sounded great. He, he would love to make 90K in 90 days. He'd never done anything remotely like that. So we started to work with him. And I said to him, look, here's what you really need to understand. You got to go talk to people. And you got to ask them, do you want to do business with me? And um, he said, okay. And then he got to work. I didn't even hear from him for two and a half months. You know, he came to the calls, we had these group calls. He listened to the trainings on how to structure a sales call, how to overcome objections, et cetera, et cetera. He did all of that, right? Um, but the truth of the matter was, I didn't hear from him for two and a half months. And then I just checked in on him. I said, hey, how's it going? He said, well, over the last 90 days with you guys, I did $89,500. I'm like, wow, you, you didn't quite hit your goal. He said, are you kidding me? This is awesome. I did $89,500. <laughs> and, I, and I said, what made you do it? He said, well, I came to your program and I realized that I needed to be doing sales activities every day, every week, not just sometimes, you know, when there was no new work, right? Like feast or famine. And as a result of that, brother, that's what happened for him, man. He had the biggest quarter he'd ever had. And he'd never done more than 10, 12K a month. I think he'd had a month that was like 19K once. But now he was averaging 30K a month. Now, Brandon, man, that's amazing. So embrace that you got to sell. And if you got some things in your mind that are going, oh my God, I don't want to be seen as one of those pushy salespeople. I don't want to reek of commission breath. No problem, man. But you got to understand that you cannot reek of commission breath. You can not be pushy and still ask for the business, still go after the business. Pushy to me is I'm trying to force you to buy something you don't want or need. I'd never do that. But if I'm in a conversation with you, Brandon, let's just say, I don't know, Brandon, let's say you're making 20 grand a month and you're telling me, you know what, Nikki, I want to make that leap to 50 grand a month. Let's just say that was you, right? And we sat and we talked and, you know, I was clear you were committed to that and I was clear you were ready to do the work. The next question that I would ask you is like, how bad do you want change, man? You know, and if you say, I want change bad, I'm going to go, okay, here's how we do it. Here's the program. Here's the price. Here's how it works. Does this resonate with you? Yes. And then I'm going to say, Brandon, do you want to do the program? And if you said to me, you know, yes, let's get started. That's one thing. But there's about half of the people that ought to do the program that'll say, well, you know, there's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And I'm going to say, I get that. That's a lot of money. Other than you think this is a lot of money, Brandon, I'd ask you, is there any reason you wouldn't want to stay stuck at 20 grand a month and not want to go to 50 grand a month and solve that problem once and for all? And what are you going to say? Of course, you're going to say, no, I don't want to stay stuck at 20 grand a month. And I'm going to say, Brandon, then we're talking about making an investment in yourself. Businesses make investments in themselves all the time. Is it worth it to invest $10,000 to make an extra 30K a month for the next rest of your life? Is that a good investment? 
and you're going to go, that's a good investment. Then I'm going to say, Brandon, don't overthink this. Make the investment, right? Don't overthink this. You know, this is, this is, it's a $10,000 investment. What did you expect? It was going to be free. Obviously you didn't. So make the investment. And then, then you're going to get real. You're going to go, yeah, I'll make the investment or you'll throw whatever else is there. Well, I got to talk to my wife. Great. Other than you think you need to talk to your wife, Brandon, is there any reason that you would want to stay stuck at 20,000 for another six months? No, no, no. I would say, is your wife involved in your business? Well, actually, she isn't. And I said, Brandon, she's not involved in your business. Do you think it's really fair for you to ask your wife, who's not involved in your business, to help you make a decision in your business? No offense, Brandon, but are you a man or you know, are you are you a kept man who has to check with his wife every time he makes a purchase for his decision? And I'd, I'd ask it to you that straight. And you go, whoa, 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 man. I mean, that's a little, that's a little rough. And yeah, it is a little rough, but it's also a little honest, right? Because really what's what's going on there is you don't really need to check with your wife. You just don't want to make a decision on the spot because it's uncomfortable to make a decision on the spot. And I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to say that's what's going on. I love my wife. My wife is the greatest lady in, on the face of the planet. Now we happen to work together, but if she and I didn't work together, I'm not checking with her every time I need to make a purchase for the business. I'm not checking with her every time I need to sign up a, for a new service for my software. If it makes sense, I'm going to do it. And if it doesn't make sense, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And that's why I asked you at the beginning, does this make sense? Does this make sense? Do you think this is going to work for you? If the answer is no, you should be honest enough to say, no, I don't think this is what I need. I don't want to do it. And that's a whole different story. But if you're saying it does and your fear is getting in the way, my job is to walk you past your fear. And then the final question people say is, I never make a decision on the spot. I have to think about it. And I'm going to tell you this, Brandon, other than you think you have to think about it, other than you thinking you need to think about it, is there any reason you want to continue to stay stuck at 20000 for another six months or a year versus going to fifty? And you're going to go, well, no, there isn't. And I'm going to go, Brandon, here's what people really mean when they say I have to think about it. They either mean no, they just don't have the courage to say no, in which case I'm going to say, if you really mean no, say no. I'd rather hear a straight no than us do a little dance where I have to follow up and chase and waste psychic energy or their fear is in charge and not their ambition. Now, Brandon, you're a business owner. Do you want your fear in charge of your business or you want your ambition in charge of your business? You want a super villain whose only desire is, oh, no, 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 my God, I'm scared. I don't want to do anything. Or do you want a superhero who sees a vision of how great you can be? So what's it going to be, Brandon? You're going to choose from fear. You're going to choose from dreams and hopes. And Brandon, that is what a man committed to his clients look like. Did that feel pushy to you? No. And I was going to say, it's I mean, pushy. even, even when you, you get on those calls, you can feel it as, as the customer potential client, you know, when someone's being pushy and they only care about dollars and you know, when someone is so utterly confident in their product or service that they're being pushy because they know they can help you not, not even pushy. They're being assertive because they know you, they can They're help taking you. They're a stand for you. They're taking a yes, stand for exactly. you. And you got to take a stand. Because it's human nature to not. It's human nature to not. But I take stands and I teach my people to take stands. And I'm going to tell you this, Brandon. If a client really ought to work with you and you don't take a stand for them, shame on you. Shame on you. Yeah. You're in business yeah. for the wrong reasons. You're in business because you don't, you want to look good. You don't, you, you don't care if you actually help people. You want to look good. You want people to like you. And that's not why you should be in business. You should be in business because you want to, you want to, you want to fulfill your destiny as a human being on the planet, but you should also be in business because you're there to make a difference for people. And sometimes making a difference for people doesn't look pretty. It just doesn't. Yeah, no, that's true. And that's, that's a powerful way to look at it too, because you're, you're actually being selfish by not serving people in that context by, by wanting to look good and wanting to preserve your own ego, uh, yeah. kick your ego to the curb is really where it belongs. So that was, that was number one. That was number one of three reasons. We, we have a few, a few minutes left here. Um, can we go over the, the second and third sure. reason of why people do not cross the six and seven figure barrier? They don't value themselves or their offer and they undercharge. I'm sure you've seen this. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you've seen this, right? Um, I had a fellow client of ours, um, this fellow, amazing dude, coach people. He made seven grand a month. And what he did is he helped people scale their businesses. And I looked at how much he charged and I said, dude, you're helping people add a million dollars a year to their business and you're charging, what, $3,000 for six months of coaching? No, no, no. We're going to change that. And so 
Buddy instead quadrupled his rates to 12,000 and then made it 15,000 for six months and 25,000 for a year. And you had to pay up front, fully up front, no more monthly payments for this. And within six months, he went from seven grand a month to 50 grand a month. Based on that alone, based on that alone, you know, because you should charge what you're worth. I don't, I don't mean you should overcharge or gouge people. You should never do that, but you should charge what you're worth. If you undercharge, you're hurting your client because your client won't take you or your work seriously. You, you follow what I'm saying? Because they don't take you or your work seriously, they're going to um, not do the work. You won't have leverage on them. Okay. So that's reason number two. And reason number three is your message stinks. And that's a technical term, stinks. Nobody knows why, why they should work with you. I had a fellow, you know, who came to work with us. And um, this guy, man, great guy, great guy. But he said, I'll do anything for everybody in the health field. Anything for anybody. You think about that. That's kind of a little bit crazy, right? And after we, he worked with us for a little while, we helped him narrow that. First, he was going for a money grab. He wanted to work with doctors. And they could feel it, so nobody worked with him. Then he started working with a guy with a missing limb. And he helped this guy win some medals in a pe Paralympian type games championships. It wasn't the Paralympics, but it was like a big deal championship. And then he came to me and he said, oh, my God, I'm, I'm an idiot. I've been trying to just go after the money. I'm going to go try to help these people with missing limbs. And I thought it was brilliant because nobody was doing that at the time. Now there's way more trainers who do that sort of work. And brother, within six weeks, he signed up 400 clients, 400 clients. You think about that. That's crazy. And 400 clients spent 100 grand a month from 1,300 grand a month. So these are the big three reasons, brother. Those are three powerful reasons and three reasons I see consistently with people. And guess what? I've been uh, I've been on the wrong end of all three of them in my own past too. I, it's just, I said it before, it's human nature. It's uncomfortable, but you have to do that work if you want to get to that that next level. Um, and I, I appreciate you coming to share uh, your wisdom here because I think more people do need to hear it. Like I said, the, the good ones are the ones who probably lack number one. Uh, first and foremost, <laughs> before before the other two reasons, but you got to just step into that knowledge that you you're helping somebody solve a problem that you are an expert in. Um, as a matter of fact, a story comes to mind. I had I had a, a conversation with someone who's not a client um, last week, and she said, "I want to give everything away for free just to help people." And I said, "That is the biggest mistake ever because no one's going to value it, and you're not going to make any money, so you can't continue to help people. It's actually a disservice." Yeah. Um, and I, I just see that conversation in people's heads over and over and over because they're so afraid of the first one. So I don't know which one you see most commonly, but for me, that that shows up a lot. Yeah, uh, people who are afraid to have sales conversations is the number one thing that uh, we're dealing with. Number one thing. The number two yeah. thing is messaging, is people whose messaging is uh, just not on point. You know, so we help people get past whatever's in the way of them embracing sales as a good. And secondly, we teach them how to be really good at, at messaging because the better you are at messaging, the more money you'll make. Honestly, we had a client that in 39 days from April 19th to May 28th made a million dollars in consulting sales on the strength of A, getting out of her own way when it came to going after business. So wanting to sell and be really, really dialing in her message to the point where it should sell some very specialized consulting work. The folks that uh, needed her knew exactly why they needed to hire her. And so when she made these big half a million dollar plus offers, they crushed it. That's amazing. I love this conversation. It's it's one that needs to be had, one, one that more people need to hear. Uh, Nikki, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. 
And I just have to, I, I love to end the episodes with a question. You know, we talked about so much. It's easy to just listen to these episodes and then just go on with your day and do absolutely nothing about it, which I hate. So if you're listening or watching, please don't do that. You know how I feel about that. Go put something in the comments. What are you committed to, to actually improve your life and your situation after hearing this? But Nikki, what is that powerful question? We believe powerful questions get powerful answers. What is that powerful question that the listener can walk away with and ask themselves until they get that powerful answer to help them get out of their own way if they're if they're in a spot where they have not crossed the six or seven figure revenue or income barrier yet? What is that powerful question they can ask themselves until they get that answer? Great, great question. How bad do you want change? Are you ready to take action today or do you want to wait? A day, a week, a month, a year, or a lifetime. How bad do you want change? If you want change bad, take action now. Jump on a call with me now if you're a business owner. ecircleacademy.com forward slash appointment. But if you don't want change that bad, then be honest with yourself about it. Don't lie to yourself about it and say, I don't want it that bad. At least there's power in acknowledging that to yourself. But if you want it bad, take action right away. Amen to that. I love it. And yeah, I tossed the website on the screen. If you're wherever you're watching and listening, it's down in the show notes below. You can hop on over there and get on the call. And you already know what it's going to sound like because we basically heard the, half of it on, on this episode. So uh, Nikki, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. God bless you. For those of you watching and listening, wherever you are, it's down in the show notes below. Make sure you take advantage of that. Uh, but also subscribe. We want to make sure we can keep bringing these episodes to you every single day of the week, help you grow your business, get out of your own way, get unstuck and build that life that you know you want to have, but you just don't have it quite yet. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks.